I think the argument can be made that scientists and what science is uncovering really gives us some of the greatest evangelical information on the planet today. The more we look at what's necessary for life to be supported, advanced life in the universe, the more we realize there is a God out there, there has to be a God out there. So let's look at the precision, precision that was needed for life. And I think a lot of people would be surprised at just how unlikely it is for us to have a planet like this. Again, books like Rare Earth and others can, can discuss things in more detail. So requirements for a planet capable of supporting complex life. There's an awesome list of fine-tuning necessary for life in the universe, and it's hosted on the Reasons to Believe website. If you go right here, uh, you'll find where this list is. There's hundreds of things that scientists now tell us have to be uh, just balanced correctly and in place for us to be able to have life on planets. Even the fluorine coming from the surface of uh, special white dwarf binary stars, uh, there's just so many things that have to be in place. The ratio of protons to electrons, as well as the ratio of proton mass to electron mass is key. Velocity of light must be what it is. The ratio of the electromagnetic force constant to the gravitational force constant must be just right. Habitable zones. We have to be in the right location for our galaxy. Uh, we have to be in the right location of our solar system. Otherwise, no life is possible. We need an electromagnetic field to block deadly radiation. We need radioactive elements to, uh, to do so many different things for us in, uh, on Earth. We need, a, uh, again, binary star. Uh, that's where fluorine is produced, so that's critical to so many proteins. If we're not in close proximity to that, life's not possible. We need water, not too much, not too little. We need the right balance of nitrogen and oxygen for a healthy atmosphere. We need four giant gas planets because depending on where we are in our orbit of the sun, those planets and their gravitational pull is going to redirect comets or asteroids to them and they can pummel those planets and not destroy life here. We need the ratio of exotic matter. The ratio of exotic matter to ordinary matter has to be just right. The magnitude of the Heisenberg uncertainty has to be just right. Uh, there's going to be exciting things that we're going to find the further we get into the subatomic particles that we're now discovering. And again, it's going to speak to precision. It's going to speak to creation and design. Sun and moon, just the right sun by size, age, composition, rotation rate, and steady burning state. We have a huge moon, 50 times the size of the mean average uh, moon to planet ratio. It regulates our tides, our tectonic activity. It holds our ideal 23 and a half degree tilt in place while we're orbiting the sun. Uh, it, it's, our, our moon is amazing. There's not dozens but hundreds of other requirements. And the probability of achieving a planet like ours with the necessary characteristics to sustain complex life is well below 10 to the negative 1,000. Most people cannot even relate to this amount. So a lot of times I like to pl play the guess my molecule game. So the known universe contains about 10 to the 80th molecules. So here's the deal. Um, how unlikely is it by natural random chance that one planet exists in our, in our universe that's uh, capable of sustaining life? Well, it's kind of like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a molecule somewhere in our universe, and you have to guess the exact molecule that I'm selecting. So we'd go, I'd pick my molecule, you'd guess, and I'd tell you no. I was thinking the molecule uh, uh, 28 million galaxies away, uh, 15 billion, 200 million stars away from the center of that galaxy, and that little tiny planet over there just next to that moon, <laughs> that's the molecule I was looking at. So your probability of guessing that molecule is 10 to the negative 80th. So how unlikely is it to get a planet like ours? You would have to... Um, uh, it's, it's equivalent to the probability of guessing my molecule 13 times in a row. It ain't going to happen. So in other words, um, the idea that we could have a planet capable of sustaining advanced life just due to natural causes without a god from outside of our space-time uh, continuum creating this planet for us is astronomical. It ain't going to happen. So unless God made another planet like ours, we're it. There shouldn't be any life anywhere else in the universe. Even if we're in a multiverse that has trillions of universes, there's no life out there unless this same God put it there. Naturalism is not a legitimate explanation for our existence. 
that one viewed with the unexplained beginning of life on Earth.